Welcome to My Decadent Life. My name is Jennifer. Thanks for being here today. So today we're going to be getting ready for work and I wanted to take this as an opportunity to showcase some of the little bit newer but still products I've been using for a reasonable amount of time. They may have been featured in a video recently or you may have just seen them on my Instagram. My dog is crying. Oh, he's looking out the window. There's either a cat or another dog out there he would like to play with. <laughs> um, these are products I have been using either for a really reasonable amount of time and I have a very strong opinion on or some products that I have been using for a shorter amount of time but I am also really enjoying. Stay tuned because I have a products I'm not loving video coming up. Um, I feel a little conflicted about that one but I do think it's important to talk about. So. Today we're getting ready. I am a little out of sorts. I'm on shirt number three. I'm so bummed because fall is a hard season for me. I don't always fall into love with fall clothes. <laughs> I like fall makeup, but not really fall clothes. And I am 35 weeks pregnant tomorrow. You alright buddy? Is there a cat outside? I think it might be the cat. Um, I don't always fall in love with fall clothes and being 35 weeks pregnant tomorrow, I am in this horrible transition of seasons and also body shape and size. So I, <laughs> um, I do love wearing like bright kind of springy colors like this and then pairing it with like a terracotta sort of um, cardigan or something, but I am too hot to sit here and do my makeup in a sweater. <laughs> so this is what I'm wearing today. Um, and I know that you guys won't care and you'll understand, but still it's so hard because like the weather's colder and everything's changing, but I'm struggling to make the transition myself. So let's get into this video. For time's sake, I plan to share some of these things, um, but I've already put them on or we'll do them off camera. Today I decided to use the Beat Shield sunscreen. I have a long day at the salon, and even though it's cooler outside, I find that the inside of my salon feels warmer. So this sunscreen is a chemical Korean sunscreen. Um, however, in America, this is not technically considered a sunscreen. I think they call it an antioxidant day fluid. Um, but that's really truly just because our FDA makes things really complicated and they have not um, allowed these chemical filters to be considered sunscreens in America. But um, as far as Crave Beauty goes and the Korean standards, this is a sunscreen. So I do love to use this as a sunscreen. I'm comfortable using this as a sunscreen and I already have it on. Um, this feels like a lightweight moisturizer as well. So I find that I can use this as a sunscreen and a moisturizer, even though it does say you can use it after your moisturizer. Um, I find that if I'm wanting my makeup to last more throughout the day, this is moisturizing enough for me without having to do a whole extra layer. I am then going to prime. I don't always prime because a lot of times I have a lot of skincare on. I'm using the Filtered Effects Blurring Primer from Thrive Cosmetics. Now I jumped on this the second I saw it and it's kind of funny because I probably don't need a blurring primer. Let me focus you in a little. So I don't have a whole lot I need to blur. Um, so it's kind of silly that I brought, bought this primer <laughs> and then like a week later they came out with their illuminating one and that's probably more up my alley in general. But since I have this, I am using it and testing it out and I don't know that I can say I find a big difference in the longevity of my makeup lasting, um, but I do like how it feels on my face. And it says that it has color grip technology. And I think that when I apply my foundation over the top of this, my foundation does really kind of like stick nicely to my face. But it does not have a tacky texture. It has like a very kind of silicone texture. My dog is in my bathtub, just kind of giving me, oh, he's gonna lay down. He loves to sleep in the bathtub. He's gonna lay down now though, so you might not hear him so much anymore. <laughs> So the two like real foundations I've been using besides like skin tints and skin oils have been the EXA Beauty Foundation and I'm loving this and also the Beauty Counter Squin Skin Squin Skin Twin 
featherweight foundation. And I'm also loving this one. Um, I think today we're going to use the Exa Beauty. I've really been wanting to like get to the bottom of how well this lasts. I find the Beauty Counter one to last really well. It has a little bit more of a satin skin-like finish where even though I believe this one is considered satin matte on the um, semi-satin, semi-satin um, on the bottle, I find this to actually feel more luminous. And I have seen some YouTubers comment that it does not well wear as well as they would like it to. And I have had days where it has worn phenomenally and days where it has been broken up a little bit more. Now, yesterday I wore my mask a lot. And it, I mean, right where my mask went, it was all off. But I didn't mask proof my makeup or anything like that. So I can't really blame the foundation for that. That is just a, uh, a note that I've been kind of keeping in mind. Now I have this giant <laughs> Eco Tools Beauty Blender, which seems super ridiculous. This is two pumps. And this is like a body uh, beauty sponge. But you guys, I kind of like it for my face. And I find that like I can just smear this on. And then I take like what's ever left and then I just like wham bam and it is like blended in. <laughs> so this works good for a like a really quick kind of application <laughs> if you're not worried about precision. <laughs> so I really put some thought into the concealer I wanted to use and I chose the Kosas concealer. Now I do like this concealer. It gets a lot of hype for being too yellow in undertone but I'm pretty golden yellow undertones I'm not sure if my lighting is showing that today um, my lighting is a little bit more subdued my natural light and so sometimes I think that that makes me look a little bit more beige but I'm pretty darn yellow and um, well and that's not always true either because I usually choose neutral but I find that yellow for instance under my eyes is really brightening and blends in well um, my one concealer cap did break so my husband electrical taped that for me and I have the point or I have 2 and 3.5 so 3.5 works really good um, on my blemishes as far as the skin tone I have right now um, I do have a little tiny bit of melasma I'm sure from being pregnant Kind of like you guys might not really see it. They're pretty little, but I definitely know that they're there. I don't know if my skincare has been helping that stay at bay or I'm just lucky. Um, so I won't make any claims to that. But I have really been using the Beauty Counter Vitamin C Serum. And that really is a nice vitamin C. And I think it might be doing a little something to help keep my skin tone even and feeling you know, um, not dull. So I love this Eco Tools sponge. It is apparently discontinued. I did grab a few more on Amazon. Um, but I just love how easy it gets into like the, like this little corner area of my eye. And, um, I like to use that tip to like, and like that sharper edge just to create kind of like a nice little sharpness underneath here so I just really love this bugger for concealer and I hope that they maybe continue to make it. I find the Kosas concealer to be a nice blend as far as luminosity um, with this foundation and this is this foundation without any powder on it yet so I definitely think you can see that it is a little bit more on the luminous side but um, I don't feel shiny or anything like that like it does not feel um, as dewy as like the Ilia skin tint does and I do love this I wear this often as well but that definitely isn't as much coverage so all right you guys know how much I love the Salt New York um, cream products and especially their contour shade but today I wanted to switch it up and I wanted to um, just shine a little bit of light on another contour color that I love now Ritual Day Fee has these inner cream, inner glow cream pigments, and they have them in a lot of different colors. So if this is not the right color for you, but you're interested in the formula, they do have other colors. I have it in the color Eros, and it is E-R-O-S. Let me look for a brush. My little girl has been just digging in my brushes like crazy. So I like to apply my 
contour with the Wayne Goss. This is the 01 foundation brush. This comes in one of his skin or his like face basic sets. So I don't think you can purchase this brush on its own. You wouldn't need this brush, but I do like it for contour. I like the shape of it to kind of um, chisel this little, you know, kind of area out. And a little of this product goes a long way and I find it to blend really nicely. And sometimes I don't even blend it all the way in. I'll kind of apply it gently um, and try not to apply it too streaky, if that makes sense. But then when I go back through with like a bronze or a like another kind of highlight, it sort of finishes the blending process for me. I do have a whole Ritual Day Fee video. Um, I would say out of all the products, this is the one that like stole my heart the most, but I also have a cream blush from them that I love that I will be getting into once the temps get even cooler. It's like this dark plum. Um, but for some reason on my skin tone, it just, it totally works. And so if you are interested in like really blendable, wearable, um, but like products that have like a little bit of a different undertone, like this one's almost a little bit more of a beige taupe with like a tiny bit of pink in it for a contour. It works really well with my skin tone. So there are other options out there that it might be like good for you to check out if you're looking for something that doesn't feel too gray or doesn't feel too warm or, you know, maybe just a little bit different because their products are just a little bit different and they're beautiful. So I'm going to just warm up my skin a little bit more with, it's going to feel silly because I'm going to use this giant, the end of this giant brush, um, but it totally works. And I am dipping into the Salt New York. This is the light medium sculpt and bronze. Um, <clears throat> I also have their one step darker right here. And when I want to be really bronze, that darker one does work nicely. But just kind of like I was saying, when I go up ahead and like go across with this, um, it just sort of melts that contour together and ends up being really pretty, but not like stripey. So breaking my rules a little bit, I actually want to use the Honest Beauty. Um, this is the pink rose color. I just hauled these um, Labor Day weekend, and so I just got them in the mail, I think like a day or two ago. Um, but I do want to use these. I got to play with them a little bit and I plan to do an actual like dedicated video to the items I got, but I did want to use these today. You know what it's like when you get something new and when you're filming and you're like, okay, well I planned to use, you know, products I've been loving, but then you're like, but I got these new things. I really want to use them. I'm like, yeah, I just want to use them. There's a slight, a slight scent, kind of like a it's a little bit candy smelling. And I am somebody who loves to layer a cream blush with a powder blush over the top of it. That might seem a little extra to everybody else, but especially when I'm wanting my makeup to last for a good hunk of time during the day, I like to do that. And I like to warm my forehead up a little bit too. Most of the time I use a sponge, but I felt like this was a little too overwhelming. <laughs> And I'm too lazy to get up and go get a wet, like a smaller damp sponge because I've already gotten up to like um, check on my dog a couple times because he acted like he wanted to go back outside. And then once he was out there, he was barking. So I don't know if it's still that cat making him stressed out or if he literally needed me. <laughs> so that's really pretty. I feel like you could build that up more. But since I'm going to layer it with this powder blush um, called Foxy, I'm not going to overdo it. But we are going to powder our face now. Um, I grabbed a powder that I have been liking a little bit um, more for my under eye area because initially when I got this, it was a little too dark for my under eye area. I believe that was springtime. But now at the end of fall, um, this has been really nice for kind of brightening under the eye. So... We will set under our eye with this, and it doesn't add too much brightness, but it has just enough pigment where I feel like it offers a little extra coverage if you like that. Um, and I have been liking this powder, and so I've been going like right across here, crevasses of my nose, down the center. And then these little smile lines I have. 
And I'm not like a huge baker, but I actually have kind of been liking just to stamp it underneath here. And definitely not like bake, like I'm not putting that much powder on. But kind of that idea of stamping it, because um, if I do wear a mask, it gives me a little extra lasting powder. Powder? Powder. Power, power, power. The Ilia Wakiki Run, you guys, I love this powder. So this is the Radiant Translucent Powder. It does have SPF 20. I'm pretty sure that that comes from titanium dioxide. I love this powder. So this is a tinted translucent powder. You can see it has a tint to it. So if you are of a deeper skin tone, um, you may like this to set your whole face. If you're really dark complected, you might like this to actually brighten under your eyes a little bit, similar to how the bite works for me with the tone I have right now. But I like to use it <laughs> to set my cream products because my biggest complaint with cream products is if I go in with a white translucent powder over the top of them, it, it takes too much of the, the tone away. Um, I don't find that it does that like other places on my face, but like if I put it over the top of a cream blush, it's like, bam, my cream, cream blush just, just disappears. But if I use this and then usually start up here and set my perimeter, I'll set kind of down here and then I just gently set over the top of that. I don't feel like it takes the luminosity away. I don't feel like it takes away the tone, like it lets it. It lets it stay. Now, it still is a translucent powder that's a little bit tinted, which is a little confusing. So sure, it mattifies a little bit, but like when I look at my cheek, I still feel like that looks like it could be skin and that it has a nice glow to it. So I do love this powder. This is definitely like when I used to watch YouTubers and they were like my ride or die. That's never really anything I've ever probably said in my life otherwise, but I have found, um, I have repurchased this. I think inside of a year, it's 0.24 ounces, seven grams. Um, let's check, is that reasonable amount of product? Let's compare it to, yeah, so 0.26 ounces in the Bite Beauty. Um, so that's a super reasonable amount of product, but I just find that I cannot get enough of this product. I love it and I love to set those high points in my face with this because it doesn't take away from what I'm doing. Now. Um, on a really busy, quick, like no makeup day, that even makes a, like a beautiful bronzer for me. So again, depending on what your skin tone is, that will change. But for me, um, it works beautifully like that. So now we're going to use a little bit of this blush. And just grab, I don't have like the best, I probably should have been using this to stamp that color on. And then this, I don't love, okay, I like Eagle Tooth's brushes. I hate the fat handles. I hate the fat handles. Um, I'm just trying to think if this is what I want to use to put this product on. Yeah, let's do it. We're just going to not do too much. We'll just kind of... No, it's just stiffer than I want. You know what? Let's use this. This is the Wayne Goss. I love this brush. The Wayne Goss number 14. It's his cheek blush brush. Cheek blush brush. <laughs> but I actually really like this for highlight, but... This has some illumination in it, so let's just kind of see what that does. Ooh, this is very like NARS orgasm-esque. Um, Beauty Counter's Nectar. Beauty Counter's Nectar is a little bit lighter. That's why I was thinking this one might be pretty for the fall. Like I just wanted a little bit more depth to it. I'm going to do just a little bit more up here. I like to do, like, like I said, a little bit over that cheeky area. Cheeky? <laughs> That's really pretty. What do you guys think about that? So this is the color Foxy. I, I like that. So now we're going to just happen to eyes. This is my tried and true favorite way to prime my eyes. It is the Thrive Cosmetics 360. I love to just pop this all over. I take just a tiny bit under the eye. If you take too much under the eye, you will not be happy. So just whatever's a little bit left on there. And then I like to go over the top of that. I'll pat that in. I like to go over the top of that with 
the PYT concealer and I have three different colors it really doesn't matter what color I use this one is the light pink and I just like to warm that up in my hands and I just like to use that as almost like a MAC paint pot kind of situation but much lighter than people used to use the MAC paint pots like I'm not carving out my eye by any means I just like to create that completely like neutral neutralized base for my eyeshadow um, you can go ahead and set this with powder if you would prefer to do that, but I sort of like the stickiness. Depends on how bold of a look I want. Um, using the Tiny Marvels palette, I'm going to use this color right here called Tree Hopper, and then I'm going to hop into Flutterby, and then we're going to pop into some of the Johnny Concert palettes. And I am going to really cruise through this. I'll zoom you in. I'm going to really cruise through this, but you will get the, you know, the impression of it. I'm just going to really use Tree Hopper, take it up nice and high. Then I'm going to grab a little, a cute little brush and just go ahead and put this right underneath as well. And then I'm going to go into Flutter By, same brush, tap it off a little bit, concentrate that down just a little bit more. Go ahead, use that little brush, same type of thing. When I'm doing shadow on video for you guys, obviously it's way more methodical and thought out, but in real life, I cruise, you know? So I'm going to go back in, grab a little bit of Tree Hopper, and I'm going to just concentrate that at that top edge and just create that gradient. All right, so now I'm going to go into, I think I want to put down that peach color. I haven't even showed you. I'm going to put down this peach color right here. I'm going to grab a little bit more of this concealer. So it's just a little bit more stick for that color to, you know, adhere to. I don't want to take it up too high because I have kind of a little lid. And then I'm going to go ahead and, just with my finger, press that product on. Isn't that just a pretty color? These shadows are gorgeous. So the Wayne Goss palette mm -hmm. is beautiful all around. It is really neutral, it's really simple, but it's really workable, and the black is pretty darn nice. So I'm just going to take Wayne's 08 Push Liner Brush, and I'm going to do exactly that. I'm just going to push a little bit of this product into my lash line to create a little bit more depth. Because once I pop that blue on there, I think I'm going to feel like I just need a little more boldness and a little bit more drama than what I already have. I'm just going to sort of flick that up in the corner because I really don't love wearing a wing because of the shape especially of this right eye. But I do love having just a little bit to elongate. That's perfect. So then I'm just trying to think if I want to intensify this corner a little bit more with a different color. Maybe one of these deeper, yeah, let's do Death Moth from Sydney Grace. And I am just going to kind of stamp that in just like right in here just to create a little bit more of a drama kind of to go along with that dark color. That's really perfect. And then we're gonna pop a little bit of that blue on. And I'm just gonna be careful because I don't want it to be overwhelming. I think, do I want it to be in the middle? Or do I want it to be on the edge? I think, I think let's just put it, whoa, it is so beautiful and so bright. It's gonna feel a little green against those, mixed with some of those coppery kind of gold tones. I'm going to take a little brush so I can just sort of gently blend it. Flip that brush around and I'm going to pop into that peach color again so that we don't get like too overrun by the blue and blend those together. 
Okay, so I'm really liking now, like, taking that peach over the top of that. I hope I wasn't covering that up. Look how, can you guys see how stunning that is? That's gorgeous. All right. Looks like I have, like, a little bit of blue, a little bit of green. I'm going to take that tree hopper color again and just sort of blend through that top edge. Maybe feather it out a little bit. And then just so that I don't feel like I'm too bold on the top and not enough on the bottom, we're going to take a little bit of that tree hopper. Nope, sorry, death moth. I was talking about death moth, the darker color. And run that underneath and that'll help to blend out that black a little bit and then just because I don't want to lose this little wing I'm just going to take what's left on that brush and just sort of intensify well I might have to take a little bit more I think the blue kind of I think the blue kind of I really probably could have done the blue first but Sometimes things just get kind of toppled on top of each other and you just need to re-intensify those places. But sometimes I like having that base in there so it gives me like a road map to follow. So there, I think that's really pretty. We're going to top with eyebrow. Now I grabbed, this is my beauty counter. I love my beauty counter um, brow gel. However, I feel like the Will People is a super affordable dupe for it. My beauty counter one is pretty much used up. Um, the Will People one definitely, like it gets a little bit of extra product on it, but I think this was 14 bucks. You can grab this at like Target or Credo. I will link it down below. And I do like it. And I have this one in, I believe it's light. Blonde. So this one's called Blonde. My beauty counter one must be light. And I think that this is a really nice taupe shade. And if you like a nice fluffy brow, it does do that. I wish I remembered when I opened this. And I feel like it's getting a little, you know... Like a little clumpy, chunky, but I'm not quite ready to call it quits yet. If you like it enough and the price isn't too much, go ahead and use it. I mean, I really like how it makes my brows look, but I do understand that it can be a little expensive if it's drying out pretty quickly. But I, um, I can't truly speak on that because I feel like a lot of brow products do that, so it's not like an unusual thing, especially in like that mascara wand kind of form. Okay, so I ended up just flicking out that corner a little bit more because once I did my other eye, they never match up, right? Like yours maybe do, mine never do. <laughs> I'm going to finish. I am going to add just a little bit of this Beauty Counter Topaz highlight. I just want like a little bit more right here. And I'm running out of time to use this because once I lose this summer glow, um, this color will be a little too dark for me. Um, Beauty Counter does have the halo color, which is a little bit on the pinky side, which isn't really my favorite, but stay tuned. There might be like, there might be some like more fun stuff coming from there. Okay, so we're going to do mascara. I'm not really going to demo this because I did do a whole demo on this and I will share that video up here. But my thoughts on the Kosas Big Clean Mascara, since I've been using it for a couple weeks now, um, I get a little bit of flaking. I do. Just little bits. And they're pretty easy to wipe off. And I don't really get smudging unless I find that I'm touching my eyes, which I usually can keep my hands off my eyes for the most part. So I will pop this on and we will be back to finish up with lips. And do you guys know what I'm going to use? Do you know what I've been loving? Take a guess. So mascara is on and then I used the Wayne Goss Essential Eye Coal to deepen the um, tight line kind of lash line area. I am loving this eyeliner. I cannot recommend it enough. I don't even have an affiliate code for it or anything and I would still tell you that this is one of the best 
eyeliners I think I've ever used. I think it's great. It's $14. Um, I'm not 100% sure about exactly how much is in here compared 1.14 ounces compared to another. Well, here's like an eyebrow pencil. So like my Thrive. Okay, so like 0 0.04 ounces, 1.14 grams in this, I like my Thrive Cosmetics eyebrow is 0 0.09 grams and this is like $24 and this is $14. So if that gives you any bit of an indication, I mean, I feel like this is worth $14. I think it's amazing. I have my um, lips lined with the khaki lip liner and then I actually used Ruth. Ah! So I used khaki to line and then I used Ruth to fill in the center a little bit. Um, these make a great pair. I feel like these could be the only lip products I own. Truly, I think like this would be a beautiful lip color on me all the time. But because I love these lip color serums from Fit Glow Beauty, we are going to put the color T over the top. These just feel so beautiful. I can't get enough of them. All right, I do have where I set, I don't have a makeup setting spray I love. Cloven Hollow just came out with one that I definitely intend to pick up. Um, I've been using the Pacifica, this is the Pineapple Flower Oil Free Matte Mist, but I'm not sure if this is even for sale anymore because they often discontinue and launch new things so often. Um, there's a strong scent in this, I don't necessarily love it, but if I do want a little bit of a mist, this is a reasonable one for me to choose. I just have to be careful because I did already put my mascara on. Um, normally I would try to do that before, but sometimes when I'm filming, I feel like I go in this order and it's like actually more out of order, but like it seems like it makes more sense to you guys maybe. So here is my finished look. Let's pop the hair out. Okay, so here is my finished look. I popped on my cardigan. This is like a chenille, I believe it's called, cardigan that I got at Target last year. If they still have these available, I will link it down below. It is so soft and so cozy, um, but like I said, I get like a little bit warm because <laughs> it's not quite cold enough for me to wear it full time yet, but I'll kind of wear it as a jacket to run to and from work. So. Here is the finished look. I love how the eyes turned out. I mean, I think that they're just beautiful. Are you somebody who doesn't mind dipping into several palettes or do you want everything you need right in the palette? Because like these little Johnny concerts, I really feel like I do need to incorporate something else with them, um, but I don't mind that. I mean, I love it. Sure, it's great if it can all kind of come together, but then I feel like I have so many colors I'll never work through, you know? So I like having these little extras, kind of like little companion palettes, and I think that the Wayne palette is great for that too. It's like this and those Johnny Concerts work out really well. So same thing with, I've been using some of the Aether Beauty um, from the Joshua Tree palette in conjunction with the Johnny Concert, and um, that works really good too. So please let me know what you think about this look. Thank you so much for watching, and be on the lookout. I'm gonna do um, a video showing you what I did get from Honest Beauty, um, and I'll do some swatches and stuff. I didn't get like every color, of course. I just truly only got what I thought I would use um, and what I had room for in my collection, but I'd still like to share that with you and my thoughts on how I think that they wear and how um, they are to use. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Please consider subscribing. Um, turn on the bell. I always forget to say that, but if you don't turn on the bell, YouTube isn't really going to show you anything I'm up to. So turn on the bell, and I would love to see you in my next video. All right, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.